Welcome, friends, to this midweek Eucharist uh, from Modern uh, on uh, July the 1st. It's interesting times that we worship in. If anything, it is more uncertain now about what to do and what we can do and can't do and where we can go and with whom we can be uh, than at any time during this Covid uh, problem. Therefore, uh, dear friends, I wish you well and I wish peace upon you and I hope that you're finding it not too stressful. The Lord be with you and also with you. As we come through times of uncertainty, we uh, become forgetful. We forget to pray for ourselves, for our friends. We forget to pray for strangers. And we can sometimes forget God. And we can forget our work that we are supposed to be doing for God. Or perhaps we can lose our way and we don't know what that work is. Or we don't know where we are supposed to be. That's a shame because throughout scripture, Christ reminds us that we simply have to ask him and he will show us the way. And it is with that sadness in mind that we come before God and we ask his forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for the collect for today. Let us pray. O oh God, our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated for the psalm. Today's psalm is psalm number 50 and God is speaking to his people. God is telling us what we have to do. Psalm 50, starting at verse 7. Listen, my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, Israel. I am God, your God. I bring no charges against you concerning your sacrifices or concerning your burnt offerings, which are ever before me. I have no need of a bull from your stall or of goats from your pens, for every animal of the forest is mine, and the cattle of a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains and the insects in the fields are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Sacrifice thank offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High and call on me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will honour me. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When he came to the other side, to the country of the, Gar of the Gadarenes, two demoniacs came out of the tombs and met him. They were so fierce that no one could pass that way. And suddenly they shouted, 
What have you to do with us, son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a large herd of swine was feeding at some distance from them, and the demons begged him, If you cast us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. So they suddenly came out and entered the swine, and suddenly the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and perished in the water. The swine herds ran off, and on going into the town they told the whole story about what had happened to the demoniacs. Then the whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their neighbourhood. And after getting into a boat, he crossed the water and came to his own town. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. That um, Gospel is full of messages. Jesus heals the humans, he drives the demons out, the demons go to the pigs and the pigs run into the sea where they die. People come and chase Jesus off because he's just killed all their pigs. There's a lot going on. But I think there is one core message, one core value for us today. And that's the dialogue between Jesus and the demons. And when the demons know they're beaten by Christ, and they knew that from the first moment they met, what have you to do with us, son of God? Drive us into the pigs, don't kill us. They knew instantly they were done for. But they tried to save their own skin. And in doing so, they ignored what God might do for them. So they said, stick us in the pigs. Jesus would have known, I suspect, that had he put them in the pigs, the pigs would panic, the pigs would jump off the cliff, and the demons would die anyway, which they did. I don't know what Jesus had in mind other than to put the demons in the pigs, maybe to kill them, maybe he didn't care, I don't know. But he let the demons decide. He let the demons take their fate into their own hands. And in doing so, they came off worse than perhaps they might have done. And I think there's a message there for us. And that's tied up with the psalm. If you remember that psalm we just heard, God says, you don't have to do anything to serve me. Just give me thank offerings and call on me every now and then when you want help. And in doing so, he says, you will honour me. I think the demon story in the gospel echoes a similar message. We cannot help ourselves as well as Christ can help us, as well as God can help us. We take our own fate into our own hands at our own peril. And I think at this time of uncertainty in COVID, the best thing we can do, apart from trying to keep safe and healthy, of course, is to pray to God and is to ask God for his help and for his wisdom and for his way through. In fact, we say to God, let your will be done, not mine. That may be uncomfortable. It may have been uncomfortable for the pigs. It may be uncomfortable for us. We don't know what God's will is. But I do believe that if we ask God for his will, and all we do is offer him thanks and ask for help, we are better off in the long run than if we try to take things into our own hands. Friends, what this message quite means to you, I don't know, but it is a message that has been put into my mind for today. And I hope I'm speaking to someone. I don't normally speak like this, uh, I, I normally have great confidence in the message I'm saying, but I, I'm being given this message. It came into my mind on the way here, and I hope I'm speaking to someone. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in your faith and your relationship with Jesus Christ, and the outcome will be far better than if you put your trust in yourself. I, I really do believe that. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks today. We give you thanks, Lord, 
for the glimpse of a better world that we had whilst we were in lockdown. We give you thanks, Lord, for the taste of something really special when everyone pulled together during lockdown. And we give you thanks, Lord, for the image of your own self that we saw in so many people during lockdown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for our own circumstance. Whether those circumstances, Lord, are good for us or bad for us, we give you thanks, Father. Thanks that we can grow through all of these things. We give you thanks, Lord, for your continued presence with us, for your continued involvement in our life, Lord. We thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we call upon your help at this time. Help for those people who are controlling the COVID response. Help for those who are dealing with it medically. We help, Lord, for those who are ill. Help, Lord, for those who mourn. Help, Lord, for those who are worried or lost or lonely or isolated. We pray, Lord, especially for your help in Leicester at the moment, as a second outbreak seems to be coming to fruition and the city goes into lockdown again. Lord, pour your spirit upon that place. Guide them and guard them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who is sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us. And he revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you our holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice, and so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Lord taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. O oh God, whose beauty is beyond our imagining, and whose power we cannot comprehend, show us your glory as far as we can grasp it, and shield us from knowing more than we can bear, until we may look upon you without fear, 
Through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Clarendon Team Prayer Lord God, the source of our unity, faith and love, bless the Clarendon Team that, sharing our gifts, we may proclaim the Gospel and reveal your glory. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, friends, thank you for joining me at this very strange Eucharistic service. It means a lot to me, and it means a lot to me to know that you watch it and enjoy it, and I hope it means something to you. Have a very blessed week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be with you and those you love, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs>